Okay, hi. So in this video, we're going to talk a bit about biomass. So firstly, what is biomass? Well, biomass is basically the mass of any living organism. And so this is usually calculated over a given area. So for example, if you had a field and that field was growing bananas, then your biomass of bananas would be your mass in total of all the bananas in that field. Something to note also is that a lot of the time this is measured as dry mass. Dry mass. And the reason being because water um, is not actually part of the organism itself. So your bones and muscles are not primarily made up of the water. So your water mass uh, is not counted. So it's the dry mass of organisms. Organisms in a given area okay and basically the source of all biomass is energy so when you take in energy so for example we eat food and we take in energy from that food the way we store that energy is maybe in muscle or maybe in fat stores on our body and that is making up our biomass and so the biomass is really a store of energy. And so where, where will the biomass come from originally? Well, the first things which are going to be eaten is going to be the plants. And so the plants obtain their energy. Where do they get their energy from? Well, they get it from sunlight. From sunlight. And so basically, without sunlight, plants would not be able to make up their biomass. And without plants, we would not be able to make up our biomass. So all biomass originates from sunlight or from the sun. Okay? So the energy comes from the sun. It doesn't matter how many different organisms are being eaten. They're going to have started with what's called a producer, which is normally going to be your plant. And that will have got its energy for its biomass from sunlight. Okay, so let's have a look why this is so important by using a simple pyramid diagram. So if we had a pyramid of numbers, numbers, what pyramid of numbers it means, sorry, is basically we count the number of organisms at each level. Called trophic levels, but each level in the food chain, if you like. Let's say we're in a forest and we were looking at a single tree. You would have one tree down here. You would then have loads of insects feeding on that tree. So loads of insects feeding on it. Like so. These insects would probably be fed on by uh, slightly bigger insects. And so there's not going to be as many of those. And then those insects might be fed on by some birds, say. So we've got tree. Insects, larger insects, sorry, you might not be able to read this, awful handwriting, and birds. Okay, and so in a pyramid of numbers, we're going to have something that looks like this, because there's only one tree here. There are loads of insects, um, smaller amount of larger insects, and then a slightly smaller amount, again, of birds. But what if we were talking in biomass. Let's do this in a different color. Biomass. Well, have a think about the mass of a tree. Mass of a tree is going to be mm, very big, very big. Like so. Then all of your insects put together are not going to weigh as much as that tree. All of the larger insects put together, because there are less of them, are going to weigh even less. And then your birds, there are even less of those, and so they are going to weigh even less. And so you can see you actually do get a pyramid here with your biomass, whereas with your numbers, it can vary, and you're not getting a ideal representation of your data. What this pyramid of biomass is basically showing you is that energy can never be created. It's always being lost. And so what is actually happening to that energy? Well, some of the tree is not being eaten, of course, but some of it that is being eaten is being lost 
to a different color, is being lost by respiration, respiration, and so you need energy for things like movement, movement and growth, and so on. So all of these processes require energy. That energy would normally be used to build biomass is being used for something else. And so at each level, we have lost some energy. That might be through respiration, growth, movement, depending on whether you're an animal or a plant. It's going to be various different things. But as we go up each stage, these arrows all represent energy being lost. And so that is why we have the pyramid of biomass and it actually does look like a pyramid because the energy here is greater than the energy here, here and here. And that is something that we cannot establish from a pyramid of numbers. Okay, so try and now pause the video and come up with a pyramid of biomass for this food chain. We've got grass being eaten by insects, which are in turn being eaten by frogs, and who are then being eaten by snakes. Okay, so pause the video now and see if you can do it. Okay, now hopefully you came up with something that looks like this. So obviously this wasn't drawn by me, but we have the green plants at the bottom, which is the grass. They are being eaten by the insects and there's a massive drop in biomass there because obviously so much grass is being used to feed these insects and they are animals, so they're going to be moving and losing loads of energy. Then frogs are feeding on them. Energy is going to be lost there as well. And then the snakes are going to lose energy when... Sorry, the frogs will lose energy and then feeding the snakes, that means that energy is lost in that stage as well. Okay, all right, let's move that stuff away now because now we're going to speak a bit about how and where that energy is being lost. Let's see if I can do this, there we go. Not quite. Boom, there we go. So we're now gonna look at energy loss. Energy loss. Okay. So the first place that energy is lost is just by us getting rid of the source of energy. So that is going to be waste. And so this is quite obvious. When we go toilet, we are getting rid of different sources of energy. Now, one reason for that is because we cannot digest certain things. So I cannot digest some foods. And that's true for everything. So herbivores, for example, uh, a lot of the plants that they eat, actually just, they get rid of straight away in their feces. Not straight away in time, obviously, but they get rid of it in their feces because they can't digest it. So much of the energy from the grass, let's say, is going to waste. When a cow eats grass, it eats a tremendous amount of grass, but doesn't use the energy from all that grass. Now, generally, carnivores, uh, including us, we are more efficient at digesting things than herbivores. So loads of the plant can't be digested by most herbivores, whereas we can digest quite a lot more of the animals that we might eat. Um, however, there is still a lot of the animals which we can't eat. For example, if you go to eat a chicken, if you buy a whole chicken, you don't eat the chicken's head, you don't eat the chicken's bones, uh, and that's all biomass, which is therefore going to waste. There are also parts of um, different vegetables that we eat, so you don't have to just be a herbivore. Obviously, human beings are omnivores, um, and a lot of the vegetables we can't digest either. Also, a component of our urine, or the main component, which is known as urea. Let's just write that down. Urea, very important chemical, especially if you go on to do A-level. Um, urea is the main part of our urine, and this is how we get rid of excess protein. So excess protein. If we eat too much protein and our body can't use it or store it as muscle mass, then we just get rid of it in the urine. And that excess protein contains energy, so we are losing energy and losing biomass there as well. Okay, so that's waste. 
The next one is movement. Movement. Okay, now movement is quite a drastic process. Uh, we're going to be using a lot of energy in uh, movement to carry out movement. So it's energy expensive. And that means if you are moving a lot during the day, you are burning off a lot of your food. And that means you're not storing it as biomass. And so energy there is being lost as well. And so, for example, if you have an animal um, which is quite happy just sitting on the floor or wherever it's going to be sitting and not moving at all, then we are going to have more efficient transfer of biomass. That's because a lot of the biomass is not being used for energy in order to move. If you then had an animal like a cheetah, which is always running around and it's very, very active, um, the reason cheetahs aren't big and fat is because they are running around all the time and so they are burning off a lot of the energy that they eat. And so animals which move more than other animals are going to um, retain less biomass than animals that move less. Okay, and lastly, which is a very, very important one, is body temperature. Body temperature. Now, we've all heard the terms warm and cold-blooded. If you are a warm-blooded animal, like all of us watching this video are, we are using a massive amount of energy in order to keep us at a certain temperature. So the human body and many other animals... Uh, are kept at 37 degrees Celsius, even though most of the time we are not sitting in 37 degrees heat. And the way that we do that is we have to regulate our body temperature. So we use energy from respiration, respiration allows us to keep our body at this temperature. That energy could be used for other things and it could be used to store uh, as biomass. And because we are not using it um, in order to retain biomass and build muscle or build fat stores, that means that we are less efficient at retaining biomass than other animals that might be cold-blooded. So if you had a cold-blooded animal, like some types of snake, other reptiles, uh, some types of fish, they are not using any of that energy to keep their body at a specific temperature. That means that they are better at retaining body mass than a warm-blooded animal. Obviously, it comes with pros and cons. A cold-blooded animal must therefore make sure that they are always um, acting in a way which is going to keep them at the right body temperature. Because they could still get too cold or too hot and that it would be catastrophic for them. So they display different um, behaviours which allow them to maintain their body temperature because they can't use energy in order to do so. Okay, so that was a brief overview. Um, I hope that sort of cleared up what biomass is, why we use biomass instead of pyramid of numbers, and why it is that at each stage of the pyramid, so as we can see here, each stage biomass is being lost. That is always true. There is never a pyramid of biomass where one level is uh, going up to the next level because then where does that one get its energy from? Okay, so I hope that's helped. If you do have any questions, please do leave them in the comment box below or send me an email using the link and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.